in the age of the smartphone, which are capable of multiple modes of communication with pretty much anyone else on the planet at any time, why would anyone want or even need an amateur radio license? It's a good question, it's a fair question, and I've gotten that question quite a bit. I mean, these things are incredible, but amateur radio still has a lot to offer. I've picked five reasons, might not be the best reasons, they're not the five reasons why I got into the hobby, but I tried to pick five reasons that might speak to the widest range of people that might watch this video. I haven't made a video in a while, let's get going. Let's just jump right into it, these are in no particular order. An amateur radio license can be a real nice thing to put on your resume, or CV as I know other parts of the world call them. I mean, think about it. A license from the Federal Communication Commission to mess with RF energy? Yeah, that looks pretty good on a resume, especially if you're going for a technical job or a job that requires some technical proficiencies somewhere. And if your resume or CV is a little light on certifications, qualifications, and licenses, well, the ham radio license is pretty inexpensive and fairly easy to obtain. If you are going to do this, I would suggest one thing, though. You're going to need a story because someone might ask you about that license and how you've used it. So I suggest you take one day. After you've gotten your license, take one day. Spend, I don't know, $40, $45 on a handheld ham radio, program it, and then get it on the air and make a few contacts. That way at least you have a story. You can tell somebody, yeah, I was interested in the subject matter. Uh, I was learning about it. I figured, hey, why not get a ham radio license? I did that, I got it on the air, I talked to a few people, but it's really not for me. I might consider in the future upgrading to general and maybe trying out the HF bands. That's a story, that answers the question, shows your technical proficiency. So yeah, ham radio as a resume builder, it's a good thing. Before we get to number two, please just give me one minute to explain how licensing works. Uh, licenses are handled different in every single country, but here in the U.S., they're issued by the Federal Communication Commission. They're good for 10 years, and they don't charge you anything for that license. And after your license is ready to expire, you can just renew it. Now, in order to get your license, you're going to have to take a test. And there's three different levels of license, technician, general, and extra. Each one of those requires you take a multiple choice test. Now all of the questions and answers that could be asked on that test are published. So you can just memorize the questions and the correct answers. Or you can learn the material and, and learn it that way. There's plenty of ways to learn the material to get your license. The license are administered by amateur operators, hams, that volunteer to do this, and they can charge up to, I don't know, $15 for their time and materials, so the license might cost you $15 to get. Now, if you pass your technicians, they'll ask you if you want to take your general. You can try it, or if you've studied for it, go for it. And then if you pass that, you can take your extra. So you can get all three levels of license in one sitting, and it happens. It's pretty remarkable. So that's the licensing in the U.S. You can look into how licensing is handled in your country. Let's move on to reason number two, and that would be friends. Ham radio at its heart is a social hobby. It's all about one-to-one -one communication. And if you've just moved somewhere, or if you've been in the same spot forever, and you just find yourself short of friends, having a radio is a great way to meet smart and interesting people. When you get on the air and you start chatting with people, you're chatting about your lives, what you do, how you do, all of that stuff, and you get to know them over time, and eventually you might want to meet them uh, in real life without the radios. It's kind of a natural progression of things. If you're serious about making friends in the amateur radio hobby, I suggest you join the local club. They get together for events, uh, charity stuff, parties. I mean, you know, it's a club. It's a social club uh, where, where everyone has the same interest. And that's what's neat about ham radio. And like I said, uh, if you're putting the effort into making friends on ham radio, you're going to meet some smart, interesting people. A lot of engineers, a lot of people who, who have or had interesting careers, uh, some really smart folks. But, little caveat, if you're the type of person that goes into my YouTube comments and talks about how I need to hit the gym 
Sorry to say, an amateur radio license probably isn't going to help you make friends. But for everyone else, definitely could. Let's move on to reason number three why you should get your amateur radio license. And that would be emergency communications. Now, I know this one's probably really pretty obvious. In fact, my last video was on emergency communications and all the different levels of preparedness you can be. If you want to watch that, I'll put a link down in the description. But, you know, cell phones are great c communication devices, almost perfect. Right up until the time they're not. These need infrastructure, cell towers and internet, and Wi-Fi, okay? Without those, the only way you're going to be able to communicate with this is throwing it at someone and saying, hey, I want to talk to you. That's it. That's how good these are in, in, in a case where you don't have the infrastructure. Now, hams use infrastructure with their radios, but they don't have to. I've got a backpack, two radios, three antenna systems. Both radios have batteries. And I have an extra external battery that I can use to charge the other two. And I have a solar charger uh, to charge that battery. So unless the emergency event is the sun is no longer in the sky, I'll be able to communicate locally in my metro area and then to different states, different countries for a long, long time. That's pretty cool. If you are really serious about emergency communications with ham radio and you want to help other people, well, you're going to want to join one of the clubs or organizations like Aries or Races that focus on it. Uh, shout out to North Fulton Aries, the local club here that focuses on emergency communications. These are the people that will work with local communities, first responders, and governments to set up emergency communication plans. And then they practice and drill and train their members. They have nets on uh, the local repeater. I've been to some of their events. I've listened to their nets. Uh, really good people. And I'll tell you, these are the ones that are going to jump into action when there's an emergency. Use their skills and equipment. Put them to use to help others communicate when there's an emergency. I'm going to start number four by asking you a question. Does it sound interesting to you to build a pair of radios and antennas that use microwaves to communicate? That sounds interesting to you. You might be what we call the builder or a tinkerer or a maker. And getting your ham radio license, even a technician class, gives you access to a world of new opportunities. In amateur radio, you can build your own radios, your own amplifiers, your own antenna systems, you can do it from scratch or from kits and then put them to use in the field or sell them. If you've got a good product to sell, if you've developed something new that people want, you can sell it into the community. There's one thing I know about hams is many of them have some disposable income. It can be an inexpensive hobby, but it can also be a very expensive hobby. So if your project bench is a little empty, a little wanting for some action, Get your amateur radio license. There's a world of opportunities. How does it sound to uh, launch a high altitude balloon experiment? Put a really tiny transceiver and a little solar panel on there to transmit all of the data coming off that balloon and then use the ham radio infrastructure called APRS to capture that data all over the world, wherever that balloon might be and then report it to the internet. Sound interesting? You're gonna need your ham radio license. If you're a drone pilot, a lot of drone pilots, serious professionals with drones, they get their amateur radio license to use higher powered transmitters and use different frequencies. So yeah, a lot of opportunities. And hey, coders and software developers, there are opportunities aplenty for you as well. I'm not going to say that amateur radio mobile apps are bad, but I'm also not going to say they're great. Uh, there's a room for, for improvement on a lot of the different apps we have. Uh, but you can also create from scratch whatever you want. If you want to design and program a new protocol for, for computers to communicate with each other over the air, you can do that. It's called digital modes. There's already a number of different digital modes, but there's always room for more. So really, the amateur radio license is like a license to experiment with RF, to build your own stuff and then to incorporate RF transmitters or receivers into your projects. We are up to number five, and that's going to be learning. Amateur radio is a great way to keep your mind focused and sharp and learn new things. Just to get into the hobby, you have to learn a bunch of material to pass the test. And that's where the learning just begins. Because every pathway that you go down in the hobby, every different aspect of the hobby that you explore, there is a ton to learn. You'll never know it all. 
And I'll tell you, just from personal experience, that every try, time you try to do something new in the hobby, there's going to be problems. You're going to have to solve those problems by learning and by applying what you've learned to solve that problem. Really keeps you sharp, keeps you focused, gives you something to think about and focus on. It's really cool stuff. That's it. That's the five things. Uh, I hope, my hope for this video is that one of you is inspired to go out and get your amateur radio license, get involved in the hobby. Maybe for one of the five reasons I listed or maybe for something else. But if uh, these videos inspire you to get your license, please come back to my channel and put in the comments, hey, you help me. Because that's why I love doing ham radio YouTube. That's it for me. 7-3 uh, to you. This has been K4BBL. I'm clear.